Like, are you still picking the Bengals? You think they go in the Super Bowl? Yes, Bomani. Yes. <laughs> yes. Ah. See, I'll go with the Rams. Unequivocally, I, I will not. I have that same feeling about, and I know it's more than just Joe Burrow. I know he can't block for himself. I know he can't. I know he doesn't play defense. I get it. But I have the same feeling about Burrow as I had about Brady. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the right time. My name is Bomani Jones. Thanks for listening wherever you get your podcast. Thanks for watching on YouTube. Rate us, review us, give us five stars. You only give us four stars. I'm inclined to believe you are a hater. It is that time of week where we have a guest join us. Uh, check out Brother from Another on the Peacock Network. His name is Michael Smith, and I'm having you on here just because, like, people I feel like got this mistaken understanding about me and about people like me. And they think that I'm not the kind of person who can admit when I was wrong. And I, however, believe that what the real issue is, they just not used to somebody being right so much. You know what I'm saying? And so they don't, they don't, they don't realize I say I'm wrong when I'm wrong. It just don't be coming up that much. But your guessing ass came up here uh, a couple weeks ago, all prisoner of the moment, and you had the Cincinnati Bengals going to the Super Bowl, which I admit was one of the more absurd things I've ever heard in my mm-hmm. life. Mm-hmm. And what do you know? Patrick Mahomes turned into Jimmy Garoppolo, and here we are, Joe Burrow and the Cincinnati Bengals in the Super Bowl. It kind of sounded like you want to call me a blind squirrel or a broken clock right now. <laughs> this, is, this is what you're suggesting. But, yes. but I got, twice but, a day, big dog, twice a day. But, but honestly, though, I, it's funny. You know, you and I are so much alike in many ways. I, I like to tell my man Michael Holly all the time, I don't have a problem admit when I'm wrong because it's so infrequent and it's not that hard. You know, it's, it's not uncomfortable for me. If you have to admit it all the time, I can see why you'd be reluctant to do it. But when you do it once in a while, there's, there's an aspect of humility involved, which I respect that. I, I see a lot of myself in that as well. Well, let me tell you the other part. You, you're also not a hater, though. Yeah. So you'll get you props where they do. How would pretend like I wasn't wrong? Gabe got a skull boat. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, it's right yeah. there. Final yeah. score. You was wrong, dog. It's right well, I, there. I got to thank you for having me on, especially it, it feels like I can have some closure from that beat them down I took on the uh, the trivia contest or the, or the trivia tournament so <laughs> yes. it feels like you know I, i'm making up for that that awful showing and that time bit. i saw you have to sign the paper in the spades game oh, yeah, in, I that up. in new orleans where's the paper if i signed it where is it you signed it you, you just where? don't remember signing it but you signed it don't make me get Vinny out here to verify this me and oh, Vinny, Vinny were playing spades against mike and jamel and we whooped that ass and mike had to sign the paper because he was out here acting willy-nilly jamel i recall was not too pleased with your performance why is everybody see that's the bullshit? Why is everybody putting it on me? <laughs> see, I don't see Vinny does the same thing. Why am I the person responsible for that? We were a team. Why can't she take some of the blame for that? How, did she not underbid? Did she play her hand perfectly? Like, why do I have to see? That's just you're not helping me out right now, man. Like, but you were right I, about the Bengals. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> yeah, right. Thank like, you. Let's like, get back to that. Let's yeah, you, get back you, to that. You was right about the Bengals at the game here, dog. You in LA right now, as a matter There's of a, fact. But honestly, there's only so much credit I actually am willing to take. Well, first of all, it was not a prisoner of the moment thing. In fact, my only regret from the last time I was on with you was that I I did the whole don't be surprised if uh-huh, I ain't even uh-huh. I ain't even go all the way with it. I shouldn't but even be giving you all this credit I'm giving you now that you probably mentioned. not not on your <laughs> show, not on your show. But the the five people who watch my show, they know that I've been on the Bengals all season. It was this running gag that me and Michael Holly was having because he was shitting on the Bengals from when they drafted Jamar Chase. And so I kind of adopted them all year long. So I had them winning the division. And then when they got into the playoffs and they beat the Raiders, I'm like, they're going to the Super Bowl. So I stuck with them the whole time. But when I came, for some reason, when I came on with you, I was like, hemming and hawing a little bit. So I, don't, I, I, I can't even rightfully take a bunch of credit. Not to mention they were down 21 to 3. I certainly <laughs> predicted that was going to happen. I, could, I couldn't. So if you'd, have me at, if you'd have called me at halftime and asked me, yo, how you feel? I probably wouldn't have felt good at the time. So I didn't see that happening, but I saw that there was something special about this team and that quarterback, which everybody has seen, but nobody saw it playing out that way. Yo, let me tell you something that's interesting about the Bengals now is, like, we as media, we always, like, we got to be right after, like, the results kind of change. And Mm -hmm. another part that I think is important is, like, in those moments when stuff like that happens, 
if you stick to your convictions, depending upon what those convictions are, people just think that you can't admit that you're wrong, right? And mm-hmm. so people don't quite know what to do. So I was reading a story uh, in Athletic. I don't know if you mm-hmm. saw this one about the Bengal Scouting Department. Yeah, about them, them hearing about how cheap they are. And yeah, how yeah, yeah. Department. So, yeah. like, Dominique and I have talked about this, just like the reputation of the cheapness of, mm-hmm. the, of the Bengals. And to put this in perspective for you, the Rams have 26 scouts on their payroll. The Bengals have eight. Mm-hmm. And so the Athletic did this long story basically about how the Bengals are a lean, mean scouting machine and managed to put together this team that went to the Super Bowl. By the way, they talked to those coaches. Yeah. The coaches who do the scouting with them. <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. They witted, witted, by the way, thir- by 13 points in those three games, right? So, like, we're yeah. not talking about yeah. a juggernaut that has been built. But what yeah. happens is after a team gets to be successful, you have to be like, yo, their scouting approach must be fantastic. Like, it's not possible yeah. to be an anomaly or anything like that. And so those dudes are like, yeah, we like it that the coaches work with us when we're mm-hmm. scouting. You know, you don't really need all this stuff, da da da. I would right. love to talk to these same people if they went 4-13 and 13 this year, tired as hell, sick of, yeah. sick of making all these moves. Yeah, well, I mean, listen, it wasn't hard to scout Joe Burrow. So it's like you know you, you get to be two and fourteen you get that that's you get rewarded. Jamar Chase neither. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like okay, he's just sitting there. Some of it's kind of obvious. I mean, look, they have done a a good job, but also too, I mean, look, a lot of these guys that are making a difference, especially on the defensive side of the ball, are free agents. I mean, they didn't scout Trey Hendrickson <laughs> as coming out the coming out the draft. You know, they didn't scout Ouzi. They didn't scout uh, Mike Hilton coming out the draft. Um, Shout out to so you for yeah. knowing their names. <laughs> I told you this has been an all year thing. I've been on, I've been on the Bengals all year. I just, for some reason, when I was put on the spot here, I did a don't be surprised and thing. I should have just went all the way with it instead of half, instead of, you know, halfway with it. But no, I mean, it, you're right. It's like now, now it's like, Oh, is this a different paradigm? Is this a, is this a, a, a different shift? Should we reevaluate how we look at the relationship between coaches and scouts or the side of the scouting departments? No, they got Joe Burrow. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, that's it. That's it. They got Joe Burrow. And they signed yeah. some good free agents. You know? Yeah, who was scouting them linemen? You know what I'm saying? And, yeah. and, and right, and right, fast because I know Bengals fans are out here. I've been checking it. They've been a little salty with me because they want me to be part of their love fest, and I'm still laughing at them because they're the Bengals. Like you think I'm about to stop 30 years on a dime? You know what I'm saying? Like, like I think I just personally think that's too much to ask of me. Like I'm not out here ridiculing y'all. I could point out some of the more painful moments. Um, in your fandom of being a Cincinnati Bengals fan, but I ain't going to do that. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to talk about how your general manager slash owner used to basically run a halfway house and some of his like beneficiaries wound up blowing that playoff game when they had it where Pac-Man Jones got an unsportsmanlike conduct, Jeremy Hill fumbled, and Vontez Burfick <laughs> hit, hit Antonio Brown in the head. It was like all the wayward sons Back to back to back had it happen. But yeah. I wasn't going to talk to y'all about that. I have no shade against the Bengals. I just, I don't have like the enthusiasm about it, really. I mean, which is wild though for me to be fair because they got dudes I like, right? Yeah. I like Joe Burrow. I like the receivers. Um, yeah. Joe Mixon is good, right? Yeah. Let's just go there. Like, Joe yeah. Mixon is good. Ugliest uniforms in sports, and they have written them out for 40 years. But Ugliest in sports, huh? We were having that one yesterday, though. Ugliest in sports? No, not, nobody has had ugly. uglier uniforms that they've been dedicated to ride out. And then about 20 years ago, they're like, yo, we need to change the uniforms. And all they did was make them futuristic. Well, what's funny is, like, if you think these are ugly, they're an improvement over what it used to be when they just had bangles written yes. on the side of them shorts. Well, well here's what I want to know. <laughs> I want to know what Mike Brown actually thinks about them jerseys. Ain't no way in the world no 85-year-old man is like, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> well, I mean, again, with all due respect to the great Paul Brown, it's the same dude without naming rights on his stadium. You know no, what I mean? So I which is the bane about the owners. Of, yeah? I mean, it's the stadium named after his daddy. You know what I'm saying? Well, everybody else out here making this money off of naming rights. I feel, and, also, and that's why I respect I mean, it. That's why yeah. I respect it. Because he's cheap as hell, but he's like, yo. Some things are more important than money. Fair enough, and it is Paul Brown. It, yeah. is, it is, you know, it is the modern the, the modern NFL was was built on his ingenuity more or less. So yeah, it is Paul Brown. But I don't know, man. Like I think this is a team they got. It's so, it's so funny. I was thinking about my boy Michael Markham. Like growing up in New Orleans, this dude I went to elementary school with. This dude was a Bengals fan because he loved. You ain't love the Icky Shuffle, dude. 
Come on, come on, boy. You had to love the Icky Shuffle. It was cool. Everybody loved the Icky Shuffle. Okay, it was, it was cool. It was though, nice. though, with retrospect, what an unimpressive dance. Right. You know, but nonetheless, it was popular. So when and, Boomer and white, people, and white people feel confident they could do it. They could do it, yes. That's crucial. Or black people who can't dance. Right, right, right. You know, right. But I, like, why I, you I think the Macarena that, got to be so hot? We could do it. I mean, you had to have yeah. a good memory, but like, you could do it. Can you dance? Not to save my life, especially okay. after I Maybe. quit drinking. Yeah, yeah. The one dance I was always comfortable doing was the Humpty Dance. Yeah, I could do that. I was comfortable. I was comfortable doing that. I, was I could do that. The doing. Humpty Dance yeah. is for us. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I could yeah. do that. What I needed to do was basically, man, I need to spend more time partying with white folks, man. You do whatever the hell you want with them. <laughs> and not only that, you do whatever the hell you want, and it won't be long before somebody else is doing it. It's doing. It. It's copying you because they assume you know what you're doing. Like, yes. oh, that must be what's hot in the streets. Like uh, we was talking to Justin Jefferson yesterday, the gritty. Like, I, he was breaking down how to do it. I'm like, bro, I, I have been accused of dancing to the words and not the beat. So you can tell me how to do the gritty. I won't be trying it in any pu- kind of public setting. But Michael yeah, Markham I'll, used to love the baby. Hold, hold on, right fast on Shout that. out to him. Yeah, go ahead. This is something that's interesting, though, a difference. We both grew up on I-10, but you grew up in New Orleans, and I grew up yeah. in Houston, right? Yeah. And I realized something when I got to Atlanta is that Houston is just not a dancing city, right? Like, you get to Atlanta— it's dudes uh-huh. out here with their partners and they doing the same dance and they wearing yeah. funny color shoes and they spin yeah. around and doing Performing all this stuff. Performing their talent shoes and shit. Yes. Yeah. That yeah. is not how Houston, that is not what no. we do. No, yeah, no, no. do that too. That's Everybody not us. with the same outfits. Yeah, yeah. Let me show you, music. let me let me give you an impression of a dude from Houston dancing. Leaning back. I'm in the club, pull that shirt up. up. That's that's got that's, my arms that. folded. Lean back, lean back, yeah. pull that shirt up. That's the right. dance. Let, let, let them do the work. Yes, that's the dance. <laughs> yeah, man, absolutely. All right, so um, what's up with your man, Michael Barkham? No, no, no. I would just say he was a Bengals fan, and I, and and you know, this was back when Boomer. I mean, they were they. Were, I liked them back in the, in the in the late '80s, early '90s with Boomer, man. The way he used to play action, that thing, left-handed quarterback. I used to like Osiason, like Eddie Brown. Remember David Fulcher? Big I ass 33. Vulture. The Vulture. Bruh, that dude was a monster. So I, I think this is a team, despite their, you know, lack of fashion sense. Um, <laughs> they got a, with this quarterback and 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 these wide receivers, especially in this era of fantasy football, though, they got an opportunity to really be a popular team they on do. a nationwide level. They know? do. So like, here's interesting fan stuff, right? So I grew up in Houston, but when we moved to Houston, I already had teams. So I'm not like on the pro sports. I'm not a fan, like a fan. Well, who would you have when y'all moved to Houston? Who was your team? I had all of the Atlanta teams, you know? Yeah, okay. Right, so, like, I like I never rooted against – the only Houston team I ever rooted against was the Astros because mm-hmm. I recognized at a young age what a conditional love that that city had with the mm-hmm. Astros while I was rooting for the sorry Braves. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Like, mm-hmm. at that point in my life, I was much more idealistic and I could not respect the way mm-hmm. that they got down. But anyway, you got to remember – Oilers Bengals was a rivalry yeah, in that yeah. run AFC that you're talking Central. about. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that was a that was a nasty, ugly rivalry, and the Oilers took some ugly L's. But it's hard for me to be somebody who think about like liking the Bengals because I grew up in a city that despised them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm surprised you didn't jump on the Oilers. No, I had a team. Okay. <laughs> I had a team. They had Warren Moon. Like, they you know? did. You, you know what? You know what yeah, part of it was? Shoot. But you know what part of it was of Warren Moon was that I didn't properly appreciate at that age mm-hmm. how uncommon it was mm. to have a black quarterback. Yeah. Like I was six, seven years old. Like I wasn't watching right. that much NFL. It felt kind of normal. Yeah. Doug, Doug Williams. It kind of felt kind of felt kind yeah, of normal. Yeah. But like just then, I just didn't know. Like I just did I didn't get what War Moon was. Like when he signed yeah. with the Oilers, I was like four years old. So I didn't remember like the yeah. big deal around that or anything. Yeah. Actually, Warren's sister went to Prairie View while my parents were there. I met Warren Moon once, got his autograph. I remember I was yeah. getting, it was 1989. I went to my swimming lesson at, uh, at the new gym at Prairie View. <laughs> and my mama ran over to pick me up, and we were like, "Yo, she's like, War Moon's in the office. War Moon's in the office." Right. And she ran you, over you to need get to come me. meet him. Yeah, yeah, come back, and I still got that in, that autograph at the crib from War Moon. War, I had a War Moon jersey back in the day. Remember back when we used to wear the jersey? That oh would go, yeah. Go out, go out to those aforementioned dances where the dudes all dressed alike. Yes. And 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 did their choreographed dances. The War Moon jersey was it, man. Yeah, but the Bengals, like 
good for the people who root for them. I have exactly. no reason to throw shade at the people who root for the Cincinnati Bengals. Like, good for you. This has worked out. Now, what I don't really have a great handle on in L.A. is who be rooting for the Rams. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. BetterHelp wants to tackle some of the stigmas around mental health. For example, many may think therapy is for other people, but utilizing therapy doesn't mean something's wrong with you. It means you recognize that all humans have emotions, and we need to learn to understand them, not avoid them. We take care of our bodies by exercising and going to the doctor and eating well. Focusing on investing in the health of our minds is just as important. BetterHelp is customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist so you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy and you can be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. Give it a try and see why over 2 million people have used BetterHelp online therapy. And the right time with Bomani Jones listeners get 10% off their first month at BetterHelp.com slash Bomani. That's BetterHelp.com slash Bomani. Our friends at CarMax have reimagined car buying to deliver a truly flexible shopping experience that puts you in control. Because at CarMax, you have the freedom to shop online and on the lot. Once you find the right car, you can buy online with home delivery in select markets. Or choose express pickup at your local CarMax. And CarMax has you covered with a 30-day money-back guarantee up to 1,500 miles. Learn more at CarMax.com. CarMax, car buying reimagined. And that's weird because don't LA strike you kind of like as a front running kind of fan base? You know what I mean? Like I mean, if somebody winning, they would jump on it. You know? Yeah, I mean the the thing that's interesting about what's happened with the Rams is, and I guess it's partially because they got there a year before the Chargers did. You know, in the return, but it became the Rams became the team for the stars to go see. It'll never be nobody in them boxes for them Chargers games, right? They out here showing Leonardo yeah. DiCaprio like they making it look like a Lakers game. Used to. Chargers games, nope. It just looked like they playing in San Diego still, except for the fact that San Diego, they had their own fans at stake. Yeah. But yeah, I can't, yeah. like the Rams, when I lived in California, and this was in, from 01 to 03, so yeah. it's been a while since the Rams and Raiders left, I knew plenty of Raiders fans. I don't recall encountering people who were like still down with the Rams. Like, I don't know who it is in LA that really is invested in the Rams. I wonder if they were just gone so long to where whatever foothold they had. Because, I mean, in both the Chargers and the, and the Raiders, or excuse me, and the Rams have history in L.A., obviously. But the Rams, I mean, that, you talk about, like, glory team, you know, Waterfield and Elroy, Crazy Legs, Hirsch and shit. Like, that was, this was, this was the team. This I mean, was they've the, been there for were, decades. Right. And so when they came back, I remember people, like, at least old media, were excited about our Rams are coming back. Maybe they just lost whatever opportunity they had to, you know, have this generation of fans when they moved. Or, to or, or they might have it. I just have no idea, right? Like, I have no I don't no think concept. they have it because they're – because I, I think I saw it was – maybe Demoff was talking about it. They're looking at this as this is perfect storm and this opportunity to grow the fan base by having a Super Bowl in their stadium. So they know that there's work to be done to capture the hearts and minds of, of the L.A. sports fan. But I don't know what else they have to do. They got a, a high-profile quarterback. Yeah. They got – the best receiver in the league. They got Odell Beckham. They got Aaron Donald. They got Jalen Ramsey. It's like you got stars. You got a dynamic coach. You winning. You got an incredible stadium. Like if this was franchise mode, you should be making hand over fist. You should be owning your community. Like you you built the perfect franchise. You flip those draft picks as if it's Madden and you don't care about them to get all these star players. I'm not sure what else they have to do. If they if they don't have a burgeoning fan base now, how will they ever? That's a fair question, right? Because they got, I mean, they're probably going to be the Super Bowl champions. Like, are you still picking the Bengals? Do you think they're going to the Super Bowl? Yes, Bomani. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. Ah. See, I'll go over the Rams. Unequivocally. I, I will not, I have that same feeling about, and I know it's more than just Joe Burrow. I know he can't block for himself. I know he can't, I know he doesn't play defense. I get it. But I have the same feeling about Burrow as I had about Brady. And I'm not, of course, I'm not saying he is Tom Brady or will be Tom Brady, but I've always, I always had this reluctance to pick against Brady's ability to pull it out if it's close. Now that could be a big if, because they'd be on his back the whole time, and they turning it over, and Matthew Stafford hit a couple of them big ones to Cooper Cup. It may not be close, 
Dude, but at, that, that's a lot of trust in the third-year quarterback, man. It's a lot. You not already not on, I don't want either. to pick a second. You're right. You're right. Yeah. Like That's a lot of – you going all the way to the, I don't want to bet against him. I am. I'm already there. Yes. I'm already at the, I don't want to bet against Joe Burrow. Even though – and you saw it in the Kansas City game. Joe Burrow wasn't incredible. No. You know what I mean? It wasn't, it wasn't like Joe Burrow threw, I, threw for 500 yards or something. It was like – I mean, the defense made plays. They shut down Patrick Mahomes. If this defense can frustrate Matthew Stafford, they can keep it close. But again, man, like as much as he's been beat up all season, this is me. Honestly, this, I'm not being a prisoner at the moment. I'm being, I'm sticking to it this time. I'm sticking to it with my Bengals pick. I'm not going to jump off this bandwagon right now. But I'm looking at this pass rush for the Rams, and I'm like, they ain't seen nothing like that, you know. And they ain't been able to block nobody all year. So I'm tr- I am trusting that Joe Burrow and Zach Taylor got a plan for how to keep Joe Burrow off his ass. So what's interesting to me is that I actually trust Burrow more than I trust Stafford. Still? Like, yeah, like the possibility of the, what are you doing? is still yeah. higher to me with Stafford than yeah. it is with Burrow. Yeah. I would say I think the ceiling on Stafford is higher. In this game? Yes. Or just mm-hmm. generally speaking, right? Like, we're still here on Matt Stafford because of the ceiling. And it's not like yeah. the lows for Stafford are super crazy low, right? It's not like Jameis Winston level lows versus highs. Like, I don't think the variance in performance is that high with him. But the lows are always possible. The issue with him is consistency. He is an uh, inconsistent quarterback. Uh, he's going to throw you one. Yeah, like I feel like Burrow's a more consistent type, right? Yeah. But I'm there with you, man. They ain't but so like you can't get sacked nine times again. And I know that that's an extreme example what happened with them. But yeah. the Rams defensive line and pass rush, I think we'd argue was coming stronger than the Titans did. Yeah. Oh, that was no question. No question. Now that the 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 thing is, especially in that Chiefs game, Burrow showed a lot of wheels in that game. Oh, he's been doing that. You know, so if he could if he could find a way to, you know, avoid the rush. You know, keep the chains moving because what they what they could not do against the Chiefs well enough, even though they stuck with it. And by the end of the game, they started to do it better. They didn't run the ball well enough on the early downs, and so every play was second and nine, third and nine. So you know, the pass rush was just teeing off. Um, if they could find a way to get some kind of running game going with, with Joe Mixon, and if Joe could, you know, do his uh, do his magician thing in the pocket, mm-hmm. might be able to neutralize it. But just straight up blocking. Bro, they ain't got nothing for Aaron Donald and Von Miller and Leonard <laughs> Floyd. Like, that's just ridiculous. Well, that's what I'm saying. You already got to put two, three people on Aaron Donald. Like, that's the Joe, uh, Joe Burrow can show them wheels, and wheels run you into another one of them dudes. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I mean, yeah. I mean, I see. Don't, don't, don't talk me out of it. Don't just let me go with the blind faith in Joe Burrow thing. Don't remind me. If I want to compare him to Tom Brady, don't remind me what the Giants front four did to Tom Brady twice. You know, don't remind, don't, don't, don't let the facts get in the way of my good story. Okay. I'm on it for a second time to do a victory lap. A second time in a week to do a victory lap about my Bengals. Please don't. This is what happened last time. I went against my gut. Sometimes it's just about gut and intangibles and momentum, Bomani. Oh, there <laughs> you much, go. I, I know how much you love momentum. There it's about, you it's go. about those intangible things. Don't talk me out of out of my Bengals pick. Don't have me on the fence. I'm getting off the fence. Well, I'm, yeah, I'm not going to get you on the fence. I'm going to just ask you this. Me and Mina Combs are talking about this, and I'm a little surprised with you being – Oh, I'm uh, joking about the momentum thing. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know that. I know that. Oh, but, yeah. you, but you you being a uh, New Orleans dude, I'm a little surprised you're not rooting for the same thing me and Mina are rooting for, which is Odell Beckham, Super Bowl MVP. The world explodes. Remember when they told us he couldn't play no more? Like, I've said this many times I on this do. podcast, but remember they tried to tell us he wasn't good no more? And I'm going to ask you this. You're a good person to ask about this. The comparison I make is they told us Randy Moss wasn't no good in 2006. Mm-hmm. I, and and you being the biggest Randy Moss fan that I know. Yes. That's why I could appreciate, I knew I wasn't tripping. And it wasn't a hard comp to make about the potential of, of of Odell Beckham to go from a bad situation and, you know, uh, be uh, reborn under better circumstances. It wasn't, you know, it, it wasn't like anybody was saying I wasn't 
that Odell Beckham is Randy Moss or ever has been Randy Moss. But in terms of the career arc, Oakland as Cleveland, you know, Rams as Patriots, I never thought that was a stretch. There were some people that thought that was a stretch. Oh, no. I think that is the most apt comparison for somebody who was as dynamic a player as we've seen in a long time. He all of a sudden just forgot how to play. Yeah, he got hurt. But this this is the least – that was the least surprising development to me at all because not only is he, was he still good, not only did he have a better offensive system and a better quarterback, but he also had every incentive to be a phenomenal teammate. He couldn't go blow this. He couldn't pick the Rams and then go and perpetuate all the things that were said about him in Cleveland. So if Odell Beckham, I don't believe he was ever as much of a problem as he was made out to be. That's number one. But if Odell Beckham was a problem in the facility and in the organization, he wasn't going to be that in L.A. Because one thing, he's not as stupid. Right. You know what I'm saying? So he was going to be all right this year, if nothing else. But no, nah, man, I thought I thought the Randy Moss comparison was always the right one in terms of the potential of what he could do under better circumstances. And then the Rams, oh, fortunate asses, you get to bring in Odell Beckham and make him your number two receiver. Number three at first? <laughs> that's right. Not for Robert Woods, he was number three. Yeah, and and only, that's what I'm saying. He, no matter how good he may not have been anymore, he only had to be but so good as a number two or number three when you got Cooper Cup on the other side. So, no, nah, man, that was that was the pickup of the year right there. Um, yeah, so I want him to win a Super Bowl I'm, MVP. Everybody I'm, has yeah. so much to say. I would yeah. be just I, – I just could not believe. And yeah. you can say that those clips that came out in that one video, you know, I understand the idea that just because the dude's open doesn't mean he's the person you throw the ball to, depending on the way a play goes. But it was just play after play after play of him being open. You know what I I'm mean, saying? Like, like it was just so many of them that I'm just like, come on, man, y'all think I'm stupid you, here? And y'all try to tell me this dude can't play. I mean, you can't, you can't improvise. I mean, like, ain't no, whatever he doing, he doing something right. Maybe he, he doing the wrong thing for the right reasons, as my man once said in good times when he stole the TV right. to feed his family. Like, if he if he improvising, he must know something the quarterback don't in order to be wide ass open and the quarterback ain't hit. So don't tell me about, oh, well, he ain't running the route he's supposed to route according, according to the system. Okay, well, yeah, maybe that route would have got him six yards. Right. He opened he for a 60-yard touchdown. And by, you, and by the way, maybe that's the case. Maybe he wasn't running the routes he was supposed to. But I am not a football genius, but I know enough to know when a dude run good routes. Right? Yeah. Like, even if you say it's the wrong route, it was right. a good one. There was right. He wasn't open because them dudes is like, nah, that ain't the play they call. Let him let him go. Right. And, and, and is he all of a sudden doing something that much different? Or does he have a better coach that just knows how to utilize him better and a better system that knows how to get him open? Uh, and a better quarterback, for that matter, gets him the ball. Um, I would say among the personal stories, see, I don't want to do the thing where it's like, oh, they're going to be here again. They're young. They'll get oh, their chances they still with the Bengals. Bangs. Yeah. Well, but even in general, I mean, you know, ask Marino, I mean, you ain't no guarantees of, of, of getting back at all, let alone winning it. Right. But I would say, so with all due respect to their personal journeys and what this means for them, I would say by far the better stories are on the Ram side. Like, we talked about the Rams fan base or potentially lack thereof. The country should be rooting for the Rams. Like as much as people may not like the, you know, if you're a traditionalist and you want to see teams built through this, there's eight person scouting department or whatever and drafted and, and not just build a team overnight like the Rams did or not have a team full of stars. Their stars are all honestly quite likable. And Donald deserves to have a championship on his resume. We know they're all playing for him. They've talked about that. Uh, Matthew Stafford. How can you not root for Matthew Stafford? Yeah, I so, can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, come on, Mister Five Stars. I don't. I don't see nothing to root for. I don't have anything to root against, but I don't see nothing to root for. Why not? I mean, why? You don't think, you don't, you don't think it's a good story? What's the story? What's What's the story? Number one overall pick, underachieves okay. for twelve years, and then gets to the Super Bowl in the thirteenth. Underachieves. Underachieves. Like underachieved in Detroit. Yeah, yeah. He he's the number one overall pick. Yeah, I'm not saying he was bad, but he is the least scrutinized number one overall pick there has ever been. Can you think of a number one overall pick to not win a single playoff game in 12 years and people try to tell you in the 13th about how what not a damn bit of it his fault? Like I the thing about – no, this is my thing about him, okay? Mel Kuyper predicted when he was a junior in high school that Matt Stafford would be the next. number one overall pick, okay? Yep, yep. He got to Georgia. 
He was never the best quarterback in the Southeastern Conference when he was at Georgia. They were preseason number one with 2000, in 2008 when they added this freshman name, A.J. Green. At no point in his Might time in Georgia was he a difference-making quarterback. He was a mm-hmm. very talented quarterback, but it mm-hmm. wasn't a we got a chance to win because Matthew Stafford is here. And for 12 mm-hmm. years in Detroit, he never became a guy where you felt like they might not, even if the team wasn't good, but you felt like we got a chance to win this one because we got Matthew Stafford. Never, never. He never he never got to that place. So yeah, I do say that that guy has underachieved. He hasn't been bad, right? Because that's what happens when you say like underachieve and underrate. People think yeah. you're saying bad. I'm not saying he's bad. He absolutely has underachieved. He's made one say, Pro Bowl his whole career, and everybody say, gets to go. Now they do. I would say underachieved relative to being a franchise savior. Was he, okay, if you talk about the Pantheon of number one overall picks, and it's Peyton Manning, it's John Elway, it's Troy Aikman. Would, was he on that? Of course, no, he was not on that level. But I just remember so many years of them not having any kind of running game to speak of. I don't remember a dominant defense in Detroit. And if you're telling me that. What did they have? What did they have? They had Calvin Johnson. They had had, had Megatron. Just making sure. They had Calvin Johnson. Yeah, no, they had Calvin Johnson. And Calvin Johnson ended up pulling the Barry Sanders for the same reason that Barry Sanders did. Like, I'm not playing for this shit. Yeah, but see, I I disagree with the Barry Sanders comparison. Barry Sanders played for good teams. Yeah, because Barry did. Sanders he played did. for good teams in Detroit. He like, did. like the Lions are just Better so teams. yeah, the Lions have just been so historically bad that we you want to talk about how bad like look how bad they were without Barry Sanders. Yeah, and then you're like, oh, whoa, okay, that's what the bottom is. But with Calvin, you know, then they. Well, I, I would I would say Calvin's teams were 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 that much worse than Barry's teams. But, but see, the I, I, there we go, there we go, there we go, there we go. You got to where I was going. That also means Matthew Stafford's teams weren't really that bad either they weren't okay but that's why i'm going back to the underachieving listen matt this matthew stafford there was he was such a <laughs> there were plenty of times where matthew stafford brought the lions back and delivered victory in the second half or brought them back from deficits after that they was he, behind because he was throwing the ball away <laughs> he took the words right out of my mouth that he put them in quite often <laughs> you know what i mean he, you know so he got himself out of his own jams a lot of times i Underachieve feels harsh for me only because you look at the history of the Detroit Lions, other than Bobby Lane, like who 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 was able to overcome yeah. I got the Lions under, being the Lions. But underachieve is harsh because we just don't have another word. Right? There's no way What did to, you expect? Okay, underachieve relative to your expectations. So as a number one overall Rel- pick. relative to expectations, relative to all the money they kept giving him. At mm-hmm. every turn, relative mm-hmm. to the level of, like I say, the absolute lack of criticism nationally. In Detroit, they had criticisms. Mm-hmm. Nationally, the way that he was perpetually absolved of any responsibility for the fact that maybe they just weren't that good, right? Like, not even people making the point that you made. He was making them comebacks, but in part because he was the one that was putting them down. I am just saying. You are a number one overall pick. You made all the money that he made. You kept that job in Detroit for as long as you kept that job. They didn't win a playoff game, and you individually made it to the Pro Bowl one time. It's not like really spectacular statistical achievement. You can do a lot of like compiling stuff, and you're going to get up. He's probably going to retire as one of the top three passing yard guys of all yeah. time but go look at like the yards per attempt to be the guy with the big arm you don't really see that like there were certainly weaknesses in the ways that the team were built around it was built yeah. around him but i'll tell you this i spent a lot of time watching prime cam newton i know what it looks like when there is a star quarterback raising the level of the people who are and that's around not what him. he was that's and that's, okay, what, that's, that's and that's what that's i'm fair. saying is that he yeah, has been treated fair. for so long like a guy who raised who like the treatment that Stafford gets is the treatment of a guy who raises the level. He's not raised to the level no. with the Rams either. No, he's not. No, okay, that – I am in no way absolving Matthew Stafford for what the Lions were not able to do with him. He was not this poor, helpless victim of his circumstances. And if the bar for a number one overall pick is a gold jacket and somebody who is going to take – is going to be a thermostat and not a thermometer – Somebody yeah. who's going to set the tone and to set the temperature and is going, regardless of the circumstances, going to elevate that franchise. 
That was not Matthew Stafford. So, yes, by that measure, by the height, by the draft status, by the contract, even by the numbers, which may not have been Pro Bowl worthy, put up some great numbers, a lot of empty stats, as it were. Yes, okay, underachieving, while harsh, is accurate. Yeah, just, just, just give me can, a soft. Just give me a softer synonym, and I'll use. It. I don't know. It has to be softer, though. It, it, yeah, it, it's, it's probably deserved. But I'm saying, like, you can still root for him. You can still say, "All right, it's it's a cool story, bro." Right? I no? mean, yeah, but I don't see what's cool about it. That's all I'm saying. Somebody finally break it through. I mean, okay, so took you long. Took you long took enough. Long enough. Better late than never. Day late than dollar short. I guess. Okay. Andy from okay. Dallas. Got about okay. that. Well, Highland okay. Park, no less. So if you if all right. If you just think there is some some intrinsic flaw, something that's just in Matthew Stafford that whether it's his you know inconsistency, whether it's his you know um, habit of doing the what are you doing throws, mm-hmm. if you think there's just something that's been holding him back, and now he just lucked up, and because of his talent, because of his profile, a team you know just bless him with the opportunity to be in a in the perfect situation, so he doesn't deserve any credit for that. Okay, hey. if that's how you want. If that's how you want to play. I tend to look at it as he always had this in him, and now thirteen years in, and in a different team, we're finally seeing him perform yes. on a big stage. I think that's a cool story. Yeah, yeah, cool story. Thirteen years in, we finally realize maybe he's just a system quarterback. Sometimes oh, that's what it got. Sometimes that's yeah, but that's a, right, right. But that's what I'm saying. But like for example, Andrew Wiggins. What makes the Andrew Wiggins story good is that somebody woke up and was like, you know what? Maybe he should just be a number three option. Like that's a that's a that's a that's a backhanded good story. Okay, I appreciate the Andrew Wiggins comp, but you know as well as I do, number one overall pick in basketball is much different than number one overall pick in football. And one player in basketball means a whole different uh, thing than one player in football. All quarterbacks at the end of the day are system quarterbacks. This very few, yeah, very few quarterbacks or transcend their circumstances, or transcend yeah. their surroundings. They yeah. all need receivers. They all need protection. And they yeah. all need a coach to, at minimum, not hold them back. Right. If you're but, not going to elevate them, don't get in the way. Well, I mean, I think Stafford, like the Caldwell era, at the very least, I would argue that Stafford had that when he was in With when he coach. was in yes. Detroit. Yes. Um, like, I think you're right, macro, about, like, most people. Mm-hmm. And I don't even think that you have to be a Hall of Famer to live up to the hype of being a number one overall pick. Cam Newton yeah. being an example of that one. Yeah. But I do think that a guy like Stafford in the way that Stafford is discussed and they gave up all those picks to get him, that's a guy that raises the level of what's around him, right? Mm-hmm. So Alex Smith, and I think that Matthew Stafford is better than Alex Smith, but like Alex Smith, decent quarterback, underachiever to be a number one overall pick. But I hmm. think there's Matthew Stafford where it's not just being a number one overall pick. It is being the guy that we have been told that Matthew Stafford was and who people continue to try to tell you that he was well past the point where you kind of who you are in the NFL. The Alex Smith one, I don't, I mean, now maybe I'm getting caught up in the, the reclamation. I don't know that I would qualify Alex Smith as an under. It took six years to Bro, get you, decent. San Francisco was so bad. Right. And you know what he, there. and you know what he looked like? Another bad dude on the team. You know what it looks like when it's a good, like, so, you and New Orleans, dude, right? We don't. We mm-hmm. weren't alive for much of this, but you know where I'm gonna go here. Archie Manning. No, yeah. the, every yeah. time somebody talks yeah. about Archie Manning, it was man, the Saints were bad, but Archie Manning was good, mm-hmm. right? We have examples of guys who fit that description. That wasn't how it looked with Alex Smith when he he looked sorry when they looked sorry when they looked yeah. good. He looked all right. And hey, look, he was limited. He was limited coming out of Utah physically, at least from a from a an arm strength and mechanical standpoint. He was limited coming out of Utah. We all know who probably should have gone number one that year. Yes. Um, but nonetheless, I have a hard time. The only reason I struggle, you know, and maybe, you know, maybe the reason I struggle with tagging Alex Smith with the number one overall pick under achiever tag is because of how he was able to rebound from that San Francisco experience. That shit was awful. And could have just that could have destroyed him. But what he did in Kansas City, yeah, he gave way to Patrick Mahomes. But what he did in Kansas City was was nothing was nothing to to be ashamed of at all. And what Not- he ended up doing in San Francisco, he ended up being solid and successful in San Francisco. And the reason and they only and had the, 
and the reason and they, they did Colin Kaepernick. And, yes, and the reason they didn't go to the Super Bowl in 2011. It was wild. He was the reason why they won that game against the Saints, the best game yeah. of his life, right? Where they what was yeah. it the fourth down where they ran the sweep around the left with him? One of the yeah. best play calls, yeah. definitely the best play call of Greg Roman's life, right? Yeah. And then they played that game against the Giants and they couldn't convert a third down throwing the ball they because couldn't. because Alex Smith. And so if you the number one god awful wide receivers. That's fair, but if you the number one, but the next year they had a different quarterback and the same receivers, and that, yeah, and, and went to the dude, Super Bowl, and they yeah. had Michael Crabtree, <laughs> so they weren't all god awful. But the thing with Smith is, if you are the reason that your team can't go to a Super Bowl, and you were the number one overall pick in the same draft with Aaron Rodgers, you, my friend, underachieved. Yeah. Um, speaking of reasons that you can't go, cutting the price of your wildest bill feels good, really good. Actually, it feels great. You should try it. So cut your bill by switching to Straight Talk Wireless. Now offering our $45 Silver Unlimited plan. That's unlimited high-speed data and 5 gigabytes of hotspot for just $45 a month. Get nationwide 5G on America's largest, most dependable networks. So why pay a whole lot for your data when you can get unlimited for a whole lot less? The $45 Unlimited plan from Straight Talk. Straight Talk Wilds. No contract, no compromise. At 60 gigabytes, we reserve the right to review your account for usage in violation of Straight Talk's terms and conditions. A month equals 30 days. See terms and conditions at straighttalk.com. 5G capable device required. Actual availability, coverage, and speed may vary. Support for this podcast and the following message comes from Supercuts. Hair. It has a way of growing back faster than we want it to, and somehow it can feel like we need more haircuts than we have time for. Luckily, Supercuts is here to make grabbing a haircut easy. Supercuts is here for you if you're someone who needs a haircut, but doesn't think they have time for a haircut. No more scouring the web for salons with availability. You can use the Supercuts app to find the location nearest to you and check in or just walk in. Another bonus. The salon shows estimated wait time so you know exactly what you're in for. As for the cut itself, it's always super solid, thanks to Supercut's highly trained styles. Get in, get out, and get to that thing you needed a haircut for. Whether you've got a first date or a vacation coming up, or you just want to look good, Supercut's makes getting a haircut effortless. It's not just any haircut, it's Supercut's. Check in now on the Supercut's app or on Supercut's.com. The Super Bowl. I just want to take this opportunity. We don't have to spend a lot of time here. I just want to interject that I was a fourth quarter Matthew Stafford comeback away uh, <laughs> from having, I think you turned it the worst quarterback matchup yes. in Super Bowl history. <laughs> yes. I was this close to Garoppolo versus. Bill. Oh my God. Yeah. I'm about to say, I did my victory lap on Jimmy <laughs> Dog. When they, when, when they got that ball with the last drive. Not a single person, not even the Garoppolo's, thought that that was going to work out well for San Francisco. Dude, was that was – it, it felt like it, dude, when the backup quarterback's in there and it's like, okay, we gave up the lead. I thought we could hold it. You think uh, Tyler Hundley can bring us back? No. I'm such a – I'm a softy, man. I think that's what we've established throughout this conversation. I'm a softy. I need somebody like you to counter that. I was rooting for Jimmy. I was – I was I, when, he, when he got that opportunity, I'm like, come on, Jimmy. Come on, just show him that you're not – who you've shown yourself to be all these years <laughs> have an out of body experience of some kind, but just produce some kind of magic at the end of this game to just because I want to. I just feel like, look, okay, would you agree that there's going to be, at least based on reports, whatever that's worth, there's going to be a market for Jimmy Garoppolo? Yes, that doesn't make sense to me. Me either. It, oh, <laughs> but if that okay, but for different reasons, if there's a market for Jimmy Garoppolo. Doesn't it stand the reason that they, that that you can't be like, oh, the, the Niners won in spite of him, or you know, like no, like he had something to do. You can't win thirty five games and lose fifteen or whatever the number is in spite of somebody. Yes, That's, you can, bro. The Niners ain't that good. They're good, but they ain't so good. Kyle Shanahan is not that much of a genius. The Steelers, so where you win in that many games in spite of the quarterback. The Steelers once went to the AFC Championship game. With Don't Cordell, Cordell Stewart, Stewart New Orleans as their goal. New Orleans all great college quarterback, right? Had a good little mm -hmm. run there, but not a guy that you want to be. They once got to the AFC Championship game with Cordell Stewart mm -hmm. as their quarterback. We can go through 
We've seen some bums get a lot farther than we ever. I saw. I know there are levels saw, to bum them. <laughs> I, I saw the Broncos win a Super Bowl with half with of a Peyton left, Manning. Not even half. Uh, well, with his his corpse. Now, think about I, this. The yeah. Broncos looked around at the halfway point of the season and were like, dog, just go sit in ice all day long. We'll call yeah. you back during the playoffs. But for now, you know who's going to hold this down for us? Brock Osweiler. That's right. who's going to hold this down for us. No, and just actually, come back and don't mess nothing up. Who held it down was Von Miller. They had an all-time yes, great all-time dominant great defense. defense. That The Niners, they've been good these last three years. I'm skipping last year when, when everybody got hurt again. Went to the Super Bowl in an NFC Championship game. I just, I'm, I'm not, I'm not trying to keep up for Jimmy. Or I'm not. This is not the hill I want to die on. I just, I'm, I'm confused about the fact that he's going to be so sought after in the off season. It's yeah. going to be a robust trade market for somebody who everybody tell me is trash. Because they falling for the same a, the same dumb stuff that you falling for right now, right? Just the hey man, I mean, if they won all those games with them, right? The correlation causation argument. But number two, it's scarcity. There will be a market because, dude, Carson Wentz was so bad in 2020 that by the advanced numbers, you could make an argument that he was worse than Dwayne Haskins. Mm -hmm. And somebody put down the assets. They traded a first-round pick to get Carson Wentz. put their reputation on the line. Right, Right, exactly. And so with Garoppolo, quarterbacks are so scarce that I could see why somebody might be willing to move a package. But think about this. When the Chargers got Tyrod Taylor, they mm-hmm. traded, I want to say, a third-round pick or a fourth-round pick to get him. Did and they the trade tra- for him? Yeah, they had to trade for him. I thought they just signed him. Okay, because he, he was in Cleveland before that, right? He was in Cleveland, right? So, no, no, he was in uh, – you're right. I'm thinking about remember? Cleveland. I'm thinking about yeah. Cleveland. I'm thinking about uh, yeah, when Cleveland he went to Cleveland. Yeah, traded for him. I, yeah, they yeah, traded yeah. for him. That's what I'm thinking about. Yeah, yeah. But okay, look, yeah. Buffalo had just gone to the playoffs with right, Taylor. Right, And right. honestly, since he left, he hasn't played but like two or three healthy games, right? But either way it goes, that was a dude that had been to a Pro Bowl, that had been a dude that got a team to the playoffs that hadn't been there in 20 years, like all of this sort of stuff, and the market for him was a three. I think that the – or four, whatever it was. To me, that's about what you're getting out of Garoppolo. Garoppolo's no better than Tyrod Taylor. If Tyrod Taylor had played for the 2019 uh, 49ers, they might win the Super Bowl because he's a better yeah. quarterback than Jimmy Garoppolo was. But there's yeah. so few quarterbacks that you can get. If you need one right now – Especially in a year where the draft don't look like it's going to give him to you. Yeah, he's a bridge. He's a stop. He, 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 you know what he is, I, and this might be a disservice to him. He's a, uh, he's what he's what they brought Kurt Warner in New York to be when Eli yes. came in. It's like, okay, bro, this this plug will get pulled pretty soon. Yeah, now except Kurt Warner was Kurt Warner, better than him. And they know that Kurt Warner still had another Hall of Fame career left in in, in Arizona. No, look, Jimmy. Hold Crawford, on, hold on. Remember, don't forget this. Hmm. They were good when they made that change. When they went from it was like five and four. Eli Manning, yeah, yeah, like yeah. it was an understandable yeah. move, but it yeah. wasn't because the quarterback was playing badly. They were just like, yeah, hell, let's no. get on with it." He was solid. Yeah, he was. And then, I mean, who knew? He went to Arizona and, and right. went crazy. Um, no, but I mean, look, Jimmy's limited. There's no question about it. And I know what that it's, it's time for Trey Lance. I get it. Um, I just felt like there was. I just I was hoping for a moment. Really, I was just hoping to come on here and just see your face when it had to be. I different. mean, he gave us a moment. He gave us yeah, a moment. Gave, well, they spun, moment. They the moment spun him around, and he tried to flip it to second on the 6-4-3 double play. Like, that was a moment. Can we talk about the, okay, and I don't mean to pile on the brother, but your, your Chris Guitard had an interception that would have rendered that entire last possession obsolete, potentially. Kyle Shanahan could have gone for it on fourth and two from Rams territory. And you know why he should have? Because he knew damn well Jimmy Garoppolo was his quarterback, and he might do something like that. Like, what got <laughs> me about that last drive was, It did not appear, and I know I'm doing some armchair psychology, but I don't feel bad about it in this case. At no moment did it appear that Jimmy Garoppolo thought he's about to get this done. Like when they wrapped him up and he made that spin, that was surrender. He given up. He was done. There was no no, hey, there's John Candy moment in the huddle. No, uh, before 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 that last drive, no, nobody probably his own team didn't. Believe Dude, I felt like he got. Oh, it might have been a there's John Candy moment because he felt like he got in the huddle was like, all right, man, y'all ready to go. (laughs) <laughs> I know y'all tired, man. Don't worry, we be off in a second. Like, man, yeah, yeah, yeah. We 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 gonna be there. I want to ask you one thing. We only got a couple seconds left. Yeah. But I think it's funny this year in the NBA. Real quick NBA thing. Mm-hmm. Kevin Durant and LeBron James have something in common. 
they both left sturdy, solid organizations to go it their way, player empowerment stuff, so forth and so on. Well, LeBron, he went to Cleveland after he left Miami, and now he's at the Lakers, and they gave him all the control and look at that roster. And now we over here looking at uh, Kevin Durant, well, what's going on with the Nets. And I wouldn't be surprised at all if by the time people hear this, James Harden don't play for them no more. Mm. I just wonder how both of them feel right now. Like Durant in particular. Like I knew he didn't want to be in Golden State anymore, but man, yeah. he put his faith in the wrong people, dog. Yeah. This ain't, this ain't working out as planned for sure. Although, see, again, I'm, I'm, I guess I'm just too stubborn, man. The Nets look awful right now. But if, if, it's a big if. And Durant's the difference is like the Nets, there's a there's a level of potential for the Nets. Like let's say let's say all of this is Daryl Morey sowing discord. And this is really like this 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 James Harden discontent is not as um not as great as it's being made out to be. All right, let's say the Nets are telling the truth. We ain't trading James Harden. If Kevin Durant at least can say he's hurt and not available right now, which as you know, you put Kevin Durant on Durant on the court. That changes everything. We're talking about guys that don't transcend their circumstances. Right. Kevin Durant immediately makes you a contender. So if they get Kevin Durant with just James Harden back, just those two back, that changes the calculus. The Kyrie Irving thing is still funky. I don't, I don't see a team winning a championship with a dude only playing road games. But if they just were together, there's a huge asterisk next to their struggles. They weren't together last year and almost beat the, the, the eventual champions in the conference semifinals and they're still not together this year. So you can look at the, what is it? Nine straight losses at this point. You yeah. can look at them and be like, I get it with the Lakers. Where's the hope? There's none. You would ever said that about a LeBron James team, but that team, it's ceiling is not the finals. It's ceiling is the second round. Yeah. It's oh, hold that. on. Hold on. When have you said that about LeBron James teams? Three out of four years with the Lakers. Well, but okay. No, the no, but, but he was hurt. Right, 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 was hurt. right. But last, last year, year they got hurt. But but he, he met Anthony Davis got hurt. Bro, they had Phoenix on the ropes before Anthony Davis got hurt. Yeah, I, I hear and you. And LeBron was coming off the injury. Well, I don't. I wouldn't say he had him on the ropes, but I would also say a difference though. It was like two one. Right, was it two one? I don't. I don't think so. But I wasn't okay. But think about this. They were two one in the NBA Finals in 2015 with LeBron and the Pips with Kyrie and Kevin Love being hurt. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like what we what people. I said that LeBron was in decline and Lakers fans got really mad at me, but I didn't Relative. say he wasn't really good. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right? Relative but it's not, it's not yeah. that, right? It, yeah. it isn't what that was going to be. But this L.A. experiment for him, you can't call it, like, it's not a failure because they won a championship. Yeah. But they did not expect what it's going to be, which is only once in four years we're going to get past the first round. No. You know? Hey, you know what you call that? Underachieving. <laughs> yes, it is. I mean, that's that. It, well, Anthony Davis is full circle, <laughs> right? Anthony Davis has like been the underachiever of nothing as much as anything else. I will say this about the Nets before we go: the positivity rates in New York City are really, really low. Hmm. Like, just like I don't know what they are in the rest of the country, but the rates are really, really low. And I, it's in a lot of places. I say that just to say it would not surprise me. And I've seen some reports saying that this could be a thing, but it would not surprise me at all if Kyrie can start playing home games before the end of the regular season. Wouldn't shock me in the least. And, and if you know the rates what, go it, up, they could always go back. They right, right, it, 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 right. But you know what that – but but here's what that means. Now y'all got to put up with Kyrie again. <laughs> Full time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Wish for. yeah, yeah. I, I, I just don't want them to go down as one of the biggest what-ifs, man. I mean, what if they had been healthy last year? What if they've been healthy and vaccinated this year? I would like to at least see them for an extended period at full strength. Dude, I mean, and it's see so, what they're capable when of. you think about it for the NBA, how wack it is. LeBron went to the Lakers, and while it's not the you know the Knicks, Kevin Durant, James Harden, and Kyrie went Irving to New York. went to yeah. New York. Yeah, and it don't matter, right? Like like the buzz and excitement that the we show's expected. in Cleveland. It's in right. Memphis. <laughs> right, like the, but the buzz and excitement we expected from both of those things, just like the NBA has a buzz excitement problem. And mm. the idea that in regardless of what the results were, we haven't even really gotten that invested in like banging on the Lakers or like banging on the Nets. Like it's just mm. been a it's a weird NBA time right now in terms of getting people to care about their regular season. And 
Yeah. Like, because both of these stories are fascinating. And I just think, yeah. you know, granted, it's the Super Bowl week, but should be all over the place. And oh, by the way, NBA, make your trade deadline in the dead Super Bowl week. Just a suggestion. Yeah. That's, that's, this is not, this is not the week to do it. But if they trade James Harden, he's going to be cracking. I will say that we we will we will leave the regular schedule program. Yes. For that one. But that, ladies yeah. and gentlemen, Michael Smith, check him out. Brother from another on the Peacock Network. Tell him what you're doing for the Super Bowl. Uh, doing the pregame show for NBC. They put, putting your boy on network television. I'm covering the Rams. Um, I made Michael Holly cover the Bengals as his punishment. So, hey. yeah, man, I'm, I'm out at work. Going back to my reporter roots. You know, that's but you the man at that. Like that's the thing, man. You that Appreciate like this, this this you this is a good look. I'm glad we're gonna get to see you there, and I'm glad you got the joy around the sports. I feel it coming at you again. You know you what do? I'm saying? It was a little time where it wasn't quite there. Oh, but it was I, a long time where it but wasn't I, quite but there. I, you, you saw it firsthand. Yeah, but I feel like the love is back, and I'm happy for you on that. It, it takes a friend to recognize that and i appreciate i appreciate you helping to bring that back i, I get it when i'm around people like you folks oh good hey man, i get to be a little appreciate sports nerd with each other that works out well yeah. man but hey yeah. ladies and gentlemen thanks so much for joining us here on the right time we do this three times a week gabe bassane and adi khan handling things behind the scenes thank you gentlemen thank you for watching on youtube remember rate uh, uh follow the right time Rate us, review us, give us five stars. You only give us four stars. I'm inclined to believe you are a hater, and we'll talk to you guys in a couple of days. Take it easy.